Okay, finally. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, uh, Namaste, everyone. Uh, I hope I'm audible, everyone. Yes. Okay. All right. So, we will uh, start today's proceeding. At the outset, uh, I would like to say that we are part of the day in uh, beginning the proceeding because of network issues. Anyway, we are here for this uh, exciting event today of the launch of uh, the Student Research Club, which is one of its kind initiative. I believe uh, the very first of its kind in any Ayurvedic college in collaboration with an organization which is led by Dr. Kapila Shahji, uh, who is the founder president of uh, Global Council of Medical Research in USA. And I believe that this will provide us all with a platform, especially for undergraduate students uh, to interact, to learn about the intricacies of research. And this could not come at a better juncture because today the entire world is looking at Ayurveda and is demanding answers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to be ready, and especially the younger generation who are going to the torch bearers of our science, need to be ready. We have to uh, start preparing our youngsters so that they will come up with the evidence which is required and speak in a language which will be able to be communicated to the entire world. We all believe that uh, you know, in the Ayurvedic community, we are all comfortable with Vata, Pitta, Kapha, and our language, we are all comfortable. But what is more important is we should be able to communicate in a language which can be understood by all, and that is only possible through research and uh, the evidence that can be generated. So with this intention, uh, this research club has been initiated. Before we start uh, the proceedings today, I would like to request our students to recite the Dhanvantri Savana to begin our uh, proceedings today. Students, can you please start with the mantra Savana? <laughs> Adi Devam Sarasvayam Ayurveda Bhagavatam Vande Pyushadayakam Sarve Jayasutino Bhavantu Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Vadra Yashyantu Makashika Dukha Bhagavad Thank you. Uh, without taking much time, I would like to now uh, invite Ayuda Bhavi, who has been uh, nominated as the Student Research Coordinator for the Student Research Club, to say a few words on this occasion. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Ayudha Kimbhavi, and I'm a final year BMS student from SDM ODP. Um, and I take immense pleasure and uh, gratitude to be involved in this and to be given an opportunity to be a part of something like this. Um, so to say with, um, as already introduced, the Student Research Club is one of its first kind by the local as well as the global NGO that is GCAR and AAAF respectively. And 
some of the objectives or the vision that uh, we had in mind or that um, we proposed to do uh, following up with the events at this club would be um, the i think according to me the first important thing is to develop a scientific temperament without which it's uh, clearly not possible to think in that way or to uh, start something in that way uh, also but when you tell students that uh, hey so this is a research club and stuff uh, uh, it's really hard because for them research is like something on a different level they feel that they are not competent enough to get into it so it's important to show them that there is impact it's important to show uh, how these medical researches have um, led to new uh, treatment courses and better outcomes also uh, it's very important to give them a uh, hands on experience be it through internships or by shadowing different uh, mentors or being a part of uh, others other research and eventually maybe uh, start up their own research uh, projects uh, often as i see it uh, be it my juniors or uh, in fact even a post graduates i hear them saying what after this what after bms uh, will we be able to make a career out of it so hopefully through this club we would also be able to highlight the potential career opportunities that would be there in the field of uh, research education even and in the terms of government jobs probably um and as long as we make any subject interesting and relevant i think a lot of people would not be a part of it so uh maybe using the personal experiences the current events that are happening uh, we do plan on uh, taking up initiatives um also providing resources uh, like uh, journals or databases or any other form of res uh, resources which will help the students to know more to educate themselves to find interest and to take more active participation um also it's not just okay if we think in one direction we need to uh, think of other things as our shashuta acharya also quotes so interdisciplinary uh, approach is also very necessary um and we would be starting off also with uh, having journal club meetings where students would come uh, present uh, already published uh, Uh, you know research project and then there would be discussions on it we would talk about how the process is going to happen what are the things we need to keep in mind what are the parameters how to go about it so uh, i think that's about it and i'm really excited to get started with the research club activity thank you uh, i was uh, highlighting the objectives and uh, what i was told and um, we can achieve and uh, i am just believe that uh, it is the teachers who have to motivate the students into research uh, and it has to begin i am really believe that research mentality mindset has to begin at the undergraduate level uh, suddenly in the post graduate level we cannot expect uh, anybody who doesn't have an idea of what research is all about to immediately start become uh, thinking about research so in that direction Uh, the vision of Dr. Kriti Vasha and our colleagues. I think uh, this can do a big platform for students. Uh, before I go on to uh, invite Dr. Vidyan Arayan to say a few words, I would like to recognize the presence of Dr. Asmita Vele and all others. I'm just going through the list of the people who have joined the from outside of college and the big club. Welcome to everyone, and thanks for taking the taking out your time and being involved in this event and motivating our students. Because I feel that uh, as Dr. Bhavesh also has uh, we have discussed, uh, it's not only about uh, telling and talking about uh, research and everything. The most important thing that I feel which is missing in today's context is uh, introducing the students to different stalwarts in our field. Because many of us don't know what other people are doing in our own field. and i think that we can this platform can be used because the students are not motivated you know we have been quite lucky to have studied in the university in jam with the students that were in our college and then but probably today many students will not even know their name but understand what their contribution has to be you know has in the science which has led to the status that we are in today i think that we can utilize this also uh, now i uh, request to dr vidya narayan who is the advisor to the student research club who is the 
the head of department from department of prasuti at kaji and to mysore over to you madam very good morning to one and all thank you very much sir at the outset um i would like to give my pranamas to all the guru paramparas of both the colleges of uh, jain agm ayurvedic college along with the global council for ayurveda research and as well as jss ayurveda college mysore uh, i'll just give i'll to start with i will just introduce myself i am dr vidya narayan the hod of the department of pg studies in prasuti and stri roga at jss ayurveda college mysore and i am the fifth generation ayurveda vaidya <clears throat> i am also into clinical practice and as well as research clinical research and literary research are my competency and well to begin with i see lot of participants and i think there are many students who are also there along with many of the stalwarts today who are participating in this launch event today i would just like to introduce you all to the areas of research in ayurveda see ayurveda we all know it's an evident based medicine we have seen it it is passed on from the guru paramparas we have seen it it is passed on but we really lack the kind of documentation that's been seen today and everything is documented and everybody needs yes they need some kind of statistics they need some kind of document to prove everything today is the trend and really students you all have a great opportunity in future because this is the area which is you know needs a lot of documentation be it like i told you the areas of research in ayurveda we have literary research and documentation i told you we have the fundamental research fundamental research is the fundamental principles of ayurveda which we have accepted and now today even the world has been accepting just to give you a few examples see this uh, chataragni when we speak about chataragni the modern people call it as the gba axis or the gba gut brain axis so this gut brain axis is what it is the microbiome what ayurveda talks about chataragni how chataragni can influence so many diseases isn't it so now we are they are talking in terms of gut brain axis so including the chataragni and we can we can uh, to give you another example about rasayana and vajikarna so this rasayana and vajikarna in fact today this morning i was reading in the paper the local newspaper of uh, kannada prabha where a 48 years old person is now there are 50 doctors who worked on him keeping the ayurveda principles they have made him into an 18 year old person so this is this is what we need documentation proper documentation is most important in ayurveda so i really feel you know this is the time that we must document things start documenting next with regard to the medicinal plant research see you take it uh, this uh, medico ethno uh, we have something called as medico ethno botanical survey so where we have cultivation the survey drug standardization because we have so many 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 plants you know uh, charaka has told we we have seen it in classics many such things are there in the classics but even we have the ganas also so but what is the drug standardization is it only for the pharmacy people to you know uh, standardize the drugs and use it for their manufacturing purpose or is it for the students to understand what is available today so that has to be cultivated you take it you you name anything you name anything next you take into pharmacology where you know pre clinical safety toxic toxicity of the drug and also we have biological activity of the drug so again here without the drug standardization you know every field in ayurveda every field in ayurveda needs documentation finally clinical research clinical research is one research which is going in a super swing i should say being a clinical 
being in a clinical subject but i feel the rest of it the literary like i told you the fundamental the other things that i told you now also needs a lot of documentation which we are lacking so and uh, the next thing i would uh, really like to share with you all students is you all have a golden egg that's ayurveda you must know how to harvest it that's most important so you need guidance you need the interest and also all this has to be done on the ayurvedic principles we can never leave out the ayurvedic principles that's most important see the jataragni whatever we say we are we, we cannot deviate from the ayurveda principles that is most important and you all know about i hope you are all aware about uh, the research grants that have been sanctioning from various universities the state universities so every college you know they are encouraging bms students to get into a short term research course so we are utilizing that an extent at least it can be um, utilized as um, you know as a small research and later we can take it to a larger uh, population okay so it can be utilized as a pilot study also so to that an extent the state universities are now funding bms students we have ccrs from that uh, the spark research which the ccrs is again funding so these kind of research activities and also many ngos are also you know now coming up and government of india is setting up many research uh, things outside the country they're giving students to go learn you know do research and also ethnicity ethnicity differs isn't it in various other countries so we have lots of lots of opportunities only thing is we must have and we must go according to the right path and we must always you know take into consideration the ayurveda principles and we must never deviate from the ayurveda principles we have a lot of opportunity and i hope in future we all can work as a team and take ayurveda research into a next level it is not constrained only to the pharma industry of ayurveda it is for us it is for us our ayurveda graduates it is for the students it is for the upcoming ayurveda um, uh, students who are the next torch bearers of ayurveda to take it up to the next level so i wish uh, <clears throat> the jain agm ayurvedic medical college and hospital along with global council of research in ayurveda and all the other stalwarts who all are involved in this wonderful launch program today hope we all can bring in a lot of change and inspire students for the future research activities thank you and all of you have a great day thank you one and all uh, thank you very much dr vidya narayan for the giving a world of view of the entire uh, you know depth of research which is available to the students which needs to be harvested and uh, hopefully this is just the first step in that direction now uh, the awaited moment of the day which is the official launch of the student research club and uh, before i invite dr pratibhasha i would like to just introduce her to this august uh, uh, group of people who have joined us today uh, dr pratibhasha is a bms md mph is an international renowned ayurveda expert Uh, uh, intensely trained in traditional health sciences, Ayurveda, energy healing, as well as public health. Uh, she distills Eastern wisdom with an understanding of Western principles for the best care of her clients. A strong sense of compassion and empathy, intent listening skills, in-depth thorough assessments, and well-contemplated individualized master wellness plan are a hallmark of her 30 years of practice. Client-centric, compassionate care. defines her best her pioneering initiatives in the field of ayurveda have brought her to the attention of the white house the department of health and human services as well as the consulate general of india she is a prolific speaker and educator in the community she has been an invited speaker in many local and international conferences and has given several keynote addresses she has authored several papers 
and is an editor with the Ayurvedic Journal of Health. She is senior faculty and domain expert at Kerala Ayurved Academy, USA, and for Boston School of Ayurveda. She routinely delivers educational lectures at modern medicine institutes, bodies such as Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, American Holistic Nurses Association, among others. With more than 30 years of clinical practice, she is one of the few holistic practitioners leading the effort of the integration focused on client-centric wholesome care. She has been a trailblazer and an eminent ambassador of Ayurveda in the West, teaching, practicing, and promoting Ayurveda, while also working on building bridges with mainstream medicine, practitioners, and institutes. For her work, she was nominated for the top 20 women of the year for the year 2014. And before moving to the US in 2004, she was working as chief medical officer with the Central Government of India in the Ministry of Aish. In 2019, she was featured in an international documentary on Ayurveda. In 2022, she attended the inauguration of the WHO Global Center for Traditional Medicine as a special government of India invitee. She is the founder president of Holistic Health Alliance, which is a 501c non-profit. She is the founder president of Council for Ayurveda Research founding director of Ayurvedya Anusandhan Abhiyam Foundation India and CEO of My Ayurveda LLC in 2019. She launched her own high-end organic herbal product line by the name of Swastar. She currently practices in the greater Boston area but has clientele throughout the world. Client-centric, compassionate, complete care defines her best. So we are indeed honored and privileged to be associated with such a personality and whose thinking has led to the initiation of this uh, student research club. So, uh, Dr. Kutibashi, uh, Shahji, thank you very much. I know it's very late for you in the night, but thank you very much for joining us and uh, for uh, initiating this at our college. So, I now welcome you to give your uh, launch address and motivate and inspire our students and to officially launch the student research club. Over to you, Dr. Kutibashi. Thank you, Dr. Akash, and thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, I had requested a brief introduction, but Dr. Akash has been very generous to uh, give the full introduction. Thank you so much. I'm very, very happy to uh, finally be part of the big vision that we have been working on for past six months. Um, I welcome you all. And I am very appreciative of Dr. Akash, Dr. Vidya Narayan, who has uh, agreed to be an advisor, be a mentor for the Student Research Club, and also to our young budding doctor, Dr. Ayudha, for uh, taking on the charge of being the Student Research Club coordinator. So today is a very um, significant day uh, where we are launching this vision, this initiative. And Dr. Asmita, my dear friend and colleague, is also here. And she has uh, messaged me that they have also started similar club in 2021. So maybe our visions might overlap somewhere. But we do intend to replicate this initiative in other colleges after piloting it here. So that could might be a differentiator, I don't know. But uh, more the merrier, I think we need more of these initiatives. So I think the most important thing that I wanted to share with all of you, all of the students who are here, especially undergrad students, postgrad students, teachers, professors, Everybody who is here, we all know that research was not even a subject for a very long time. Then a few decades ago, it was included as a subject at PG level. But research is a topic that should be included, and I believe it is now included in the current curriculum, but it will take some time for research thinking to come in. And this is where I feel a club like this, an initiative like this, has a lot of value to develop the 
temperament to develop the aptitude to develop the critical thinking because it is the thinking that is going to take us a long way my background is in ayush so i have 13 years i was in new delhi in ayush and now i have been in us for 18 years um, i consult i teach i speak uh, and this has brought a lot of awareness to me what are some of the flaws or or challenges in the way ayurveda is perceived globally right now so there are many things and today we are not going to be talking about everything but let me start with some of the key challenges that prevent ayurveda from being accepted as a scientific method of healing and medicine you all agree there is some challenge within india also there is a challenge right always the indian medical association is you know uh, bringing up objections to, to a variety of things we all know there is some internal um, resistance to accepting ayurveda as a credible form of healing so why is that there i think we have to think with a very open and neutral mind the problem lies in a lot of things, education, lack of confidence building, um, uh, lack of uh, developing skill sets, uh, practical experiences, etc. But again, one of the main things that the modern medical world, not just in India, but globally, is looking at is called evidence, right? Data, evidence. So this is where I would suggest that the student research club start by understanding what is data and what is evidence. This is really important because you all have to get together and you have to understand what does evidence mean, okay? Evidence does not mean randomized clinical trial necessarily. This is really, really important. What you have to understand is that Western medicine has developed a framework which is suitable for their kind of medicine. Single salt intervention, two salt intervention. And how do we work? We work with polyherbals, right? Akal aushad use is minimal in Ayurveda. You all agree? Even if we think about simple formulations, Trifla, Trikatu, these are polyherbals, right? So please define for yourself what does evidence or what does data mean for a science like Ayurveda? And here, please remember what I'm saying today. Ayurveda is a far superior medical health life science than western medicine western medicine is reductionist and ayurveda is you know it provides a framework that maps the human complexity the entity that we are the intricate entity that that we are which is psychological physical spiritual physiological all of those aspects are what make us. It's not just the physical body. So we are not looking at a single part in the body or a single pathway in the body or a single chemical process in the body. This is really important. The Ayurvedic framework provides us a much robust way of understanding all of the interconnectedness between the uh, physical self, the physiological self, the psychological self, right? Dr. Vidya was talking about the gut-brain axis. That is just one example of how you can pick up Ayurvedic Kriya Sharid completely. And it is much vaster, right? 13 types of Agnis and the Jatharagni, if you pick up Jatharagni, it includes the full metabolic processes as well as the gut microbiome all of that 
So try and understand Ayurveda fully with the scientific oversight and, and then define for yourself as a collective what does evidence really mean? Evidence does not necessarily mean doing an experiment in a lab on an animal and then trying to extrapolate it to a human being. That is that is now getting uh, archived now as a as a preferred method of doing research. So we have to believe in our science and we have to develop a scientific temperament along with this fabulous robust science which is a wisdom stream right ayurveda is one of the world's most ancient continuously practiced system of life i would say not just medicine right so believe in the science do your study diligently get into the concepts the principles and then with the scientific temperament define what is going to be the evidence for our science it could be as simple as a case study this is really important do not try to go for randomized control trial that's really not suitable for our science where you can you can do it but you know we do not use curcumin for example right we use the whole turmeric and the whole turmeric has 256 bioflavonoids. Why, why should we isolate just curcumin and just study that? So understand our science, believe in it, and then with the scientific temperament, define evidence for yourself and define what is going to generate that evidence for your science. Let us not copy paste. This is the most important, I feel, the groundwork on which the student research council should operate, right? And all of the other things we have listed, we have a 10-pointer charter, right, for the student research club. Um, so I think I'll, I'll keep my uh, small address to this much. Uh, I'm here whenever uh, any any help that i can provide uh, i'm here but we do have to start this as of yesterday so there is a sense of urgency certainly there are a lot of government initiatives ccrs has spark program uh, we have dr Asuka has just mentioned they also have a, a, a club in their college we need more of it and we need uh, leadership uh, because we should be able to stand confidently and speak on any platform with confidence looking into the eyes of our other modality doctors and practitioners in the mainstream medical world and we should be able to help them understand what does this mean because it's not as if Western medicine has created long lasting solutions, right? There is an acute phase of diseases. There are some acute conditions where for life saving, just for life saving, we can use Western medicine. This is true integration where you cherry pick what is suitable at that particular time. But we all know most of the disease burden comes from chronic diseases, right? And when we say chronic disease, we automatically know they're all preventable. And no other science gives more insight and resources than Ayurveda as to how to live life. I say this is my favorite thing to say that Ayurveda is the user manual of life. You pick up, you see what is my model and what do I need to maintain this model, right? What are the things that are suitable for this model? What are the things that are not suitable? And how do I change the care as I go along in the life, right? So vast, vast science. This is just an immense opportunity to do all kinds of research. 
please start looking up how many kinds of research some portals will show you 19 types of research like i was i wanted to share a link um, which i can probably share with dr akash and he can share with the students but look up what kinds of research are available right fundamental research basic research don't just straight away think of i need to do a randomized clinical trial no need no need so the opportunities are immense get together and take it as your own project okay we want it to become a huge success here in this college dr akas college and then we would want to replicate it in other colleges as well as dr vidya has also offered and we have uh, other um, professors who have expressed interest so the onus is on you now so i would like you to announce activities as we have discussed dr ayudha for uh, the next upcoming months um, again we all are here for any support any advice any mentoring that you require uh, dr akash is there so you have an in-house advisor and you have uh, dr vidya as an advisor and I'm sure Dr. Asmita will certainly um, be happy to advise. Right, Dr. Asmita? Yes. All right. So with that, um, I wish you all the very best. Um, you guys are, are the hope of the future of Ayurveda. So understand how important your role is going to be and trust me when i say i'm sitting outside of india i can assure you ayurveda is the future of the world healthcare so you have to be part of it and you have to make sure that it happens sooner than later okay big responsibility on all of you and i know you will do all right. I think Dr. Asmita wants to say something. Yes, that's what I was saying. So uh, before I invite Dr. Asmita, uh, Dr. Patibaji, very uh, thank you very much for launching this initiative and officially announcing the launch of the Student Research Club. Now, uh, I'd like to request Dr. Asmita, a very, very senior uh, faculty member and who is a professor and uh, HOD in the Department of Rasa Shastra in the Research Department. She has worked a lot in the field of research and we even published a book. Uh, I happened to meet her quite about, I think our association goes back nearly about 15, 20 years. And since then we have been communicating. It's an honor to have you know, and thank you very much for joining. And uh, I would like to request you to just say a quick few words to motivate our students and uh, how we can take this forward. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Akash, for having me. And thank you, Dr. Pratibha, for uh, roping me in, in this very important uh, launch of a research club for uh, uh, journal club for the students. Yeah, uh, it's it's a very right kind of move. And uh, from where you said uh, that, yes, we can yes, have we, we, can have. we may not need uh, randomized control trials for each and everything. That is for sure. So what i would like to very quickly tell the students that uh, all the designs are available and we should not start with what we don't want to do we should start with okay this is the research problem that i have identified and what type of data would generate evidence for this research problem if we start on that positive note probably for some areas we will go ahead the case series or case reports will be the better model for some observational studies will be the better model for some yes we would like to go ahead with some experimental analysis as well so uh, as on today even if in the western world the animal studies for everything each and everything are uh, really getting archived they are taking a back stage now but we must remember that we have come to a full circle prior to these experimental studies and models there was a whole system study there was no other medicine across the world. It was the whole drug, curcuma or aloe vera or anything you take terminalia. So they used to study the whole drug initially. It was in practice. There were problems. People were not getting results. So they started isolating the active ingredients. 
and then that experimental uh, went to a higher spur. And now, after isolating these 177 molecules from Trifala or 256 from curcuma, they are again coming back to full circle the whole extract. So while planning Ayurvedic study for a multi-component, multi-therapy, we should be able to plan it so properly that each component is addressed at the end of discussion. So even writing a case report for one single case is not easy. Students will think that, okay, I'm giving this and uh, this, this is cured. That is not going to be the case. We should be able to highlight why this particular um, disease was incurable, why this has happened, what was the shortcomings of the current treatment, and then how my treatment is getting uh, beneficial for the student, uh, for the patient. So this type of very stringent framework, which we have been trained into by Ayurvedic uh, you know, system. Our system is very stringent. We want to, you know, check the difference between one um, one letter and one word and one vibhakti pratyay, with which the whole meaning context changes, right? So with that stringentness, we have to uh, study. And journal clubs are the best models because in journal club, when we take a research article for discussion, like we are doing for last two years, 24 or maybe 20 or so, because barring the exam times, 20 or so articles we have discussed here. For each article, it's not only that article, we discuss the whole concept. We discuss um, the shortcomings of that article, the good parts of that article, and the complete area, and what new models can be done. So it's also training into research methodology. I wish Dr. Akash, Dr. Ayudha, I mean Ayudha, doctor in the making, and uh, all your team, Dr. Vidya, a great success in this initiative and maintaining and continuity of journey is a task and I wish you good luck and strength to complete this. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Dr. Asmita. I just want to add a few things, Dr. Akash, which I forgot. Um, so uh, just, just, um, just to share with everybody, we are an NGO in U.S., but we also have an India sister chapter, Ayurvedya Anusandhan Abhyan Foundation. And that is also a Section 8 NGO. And our request is that all of you join as a student member in the uh, nonprofit. Uh, Dr. Ayudha can share the link with all of you. Or uh, Dr. Akash can send it with the students to the students. That's one thing. Second, um, Global Council for Ayurveda Research has been conducting journal club meetings, not just for students, for um, uh, you know academicians, clinicians, teachers, etc. Anybody can come and present for past uh, probably three, four years, and all of our meetings as of recently have uh, been up are being uploaded on our YouTube channel. So you can look up Global Council for Ayurveda Research and you can watch some of those videos. In fact, right now for January also, we have a general club meeting announced and um, a global webinar series. Every month we have these two. Um, second, I just wanted to clarify, actually, the Student Research Club is not going to be just about Journal Club. Uh, journal Club is going to be a part of it. I think our main, again, the stress is to develop the scientific temperament. So again, I would suggest steep yourself in first understanding what is a scientific temperament. Do not go for projects right away. There's no need. Because once you understand properly what is the scientific temperament, how to be neutral, how to avoid bias in, in studies, uh, that will take you a long way to generate evidence that is acceptable, not just in India, but outside of India. And I'm telling you this because as part of my culmination in Masters in Public Health, by the way, in MPH, I had chosen to do all my projects on Ayurveda. Because my thing was, all my classmates, all my faculty should know what is Ayurveda. So my culminating white paper also, I chose to do a meta-analysis on diabetes type 2, whatever published literature was there. 
Um, I found a Cochrane review, and uh, uh, there were some other papers published after the Cochrane review. So I looked at all of them, and it was tragic to note that 90% of studies had been rejected based on a ZDAT scale, which looks at everything sample size, uh, principal investigative bias, or you know, analysis uh, issues or exclusion, inclusion criteria, etc. So it's very sad to see so much money, time, and effort went into so many studies, right? There's no hurry to do study. Please don't run before you can walk. This is really important. Spend a few months in just understanding what is science, what is a scientific approach then go into research and by the way case study templates are all uploaded on our website you can access just become a member it's a very nominal something some 500 rupees for the whole year or something become a member and access those resources and take it systematically there's no need to jump into any kind of research projects first prepare for it when one of the advisors or mentors can um, you know spend time with you and tell you yes you're on the right track uh, then you can take up in, in in the coming months or years but understanding science and research is the first step and developing a sense of neutrality is very important because in ayurvedic sector one of our shortcomings has been bias we already know what is the result we have already decided this is going to be effective then that paper is set up to be rejected so let's come from that uh, feeling of grandiose you know i'm a big passionate ambassador of ayurveda like i i work hard many many hours on non-profit work means no money so two third of my time goes in non-profit activities but most important thing is that if we do not spend time on the temperament the same problem is going to happen things will get rejected so take your time and strengthen yourself with the proper scientific outlook you know uh no pre decisions about the success of any herb or drug or any other intervention agni karma akshar sutra whatever you are using go with a neutral mind because any success we should be able to replicate also that is important just because you have given something there could be other variables that are working so that temperament has to be developed to know that there could be other factors and we have to rule that out uh, before we declared it was because this success was because of what I gave. This is this humility um, in addition to the scientific temperament is really important. Okay, I know, I think we are going over time. So um, thank uh -huh. you. This is all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Patikaji, again for adding that. And uh, thank you, Dr. Ashnataji, for your uh, a few words of motivation and inspiration. Uh, before I uh, go to the concluding uh, remarks, uh, a few uh, in information that is to be there. As uh, Dr. Ratibaji said, uh, this uh, student research club, uh, we will start uh, having members. And uh, most importantly, all of you have to uh, register for this uh, GPAR student membership because you know, that will give you exposure to a whole lot of events as well as information and uh, like I said in my opening remarks, you know, what is happening is uh, we are not aware of what other people are doing in our own field. And I think uh, we have to have a platform to communicate with others because we cannot do things in isolation. We have to come together with us collaboratively. And I would like to echo the same sentiments that uh, Dr. Sip and Dr. Kutuba mentioned. And even I, you know, I think uh, I call it the past glory syndrome. You know, we should come up with that and uh, start questioning most importantly and that's the reason that uh, uh, i was always thinking of launching something for the undergraduates because we get students from uh, physics you know chemistry biology who are very well in need and once they come to ayurveda what we have seen is 
that uh, intensity of study which they did for NEET or uh, to secure the high marks, that somehow gets, uh, you know, either uh, reduced or somehow they get potential in technology and all these working work them into uh, these events and activities. And like uh, we have been saying, the first few months will be dedicated by that is very important. Uh, every chapter in Ayurveda is research oriented because it starts with a question. You know, every name of the chapter itself in Ayurveda is a question. When given the encouraging us to ask questions. And that is where I think is the problem that we do not encourage our students much. Research is everything about asking the right question at the right time in the right uh, frame of mind. So I think that with that intention will begin and uh, uh, the first of its, uh, first activity of it uh, through the Student Research Club will be uh, a talk by Dr. Vidyan uh, probably in the second or third week of February uh, to motivate and to give an idea of what research is, what is the mentality, you know, what mindset is required so that then we can go ahead and then we'll decide the panel of speakers to motivate our students and to get them accustomed to this uh, mindset. So with that, before we break up, uh, I would like to request Ayudha to chant the Ashwini you know, mantra uh, before we continue. Over to you, Ayudha. Um, yeah, before that, I'd just like to add um, everything that uh, Dr. Vidya Narayan, Dr. Pratibha Shah, and Dr. Asnada Veli spoke about, um, I resonated so much with it because, um, as you said, that we need to talk in a language that others understand. Um, and when you spoke about uh, laboratory researches being conducted on rats and mice, mice I, was, I always used to question that because our texts say that go avipa and sheepa. So we would really ask to trust those animals and not our um, this thing. And um, very recently, um, we had a practical class and we were preparing basti. So I noticed that I was one among the people who asked a question saying, how does this work? When I asked in the terms of what is actually happening there, what is the Bastidra we're doing there? What is the viscosity of it? Why is it not mixing? Why does it take only so much time for this to happen? Um, but when I asked this question in terms of, so what is happening to the mucosal layer of the GIT is when the students understood what I was trying to ask. And um, like you said, I was so excited for this club to happen because I knew that people would be able to answer, guide me into the right kind of thinking and to, um, you know, raise that kind of questions because we are usually, you know, asked just to prepare for the sake of the exams and not really go into the depth of it and really understand. I think that hinders how we understand the subject and how we practice it as well um uh, and yeah so that is uh, that's what i wanted to share and um with the permission of dr uh, vidya narayan because i learned this ashwini mantra from ayurveda academy bangalore and ever since um it has been a, a, just a second Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so um, this is where I learned the entire uh, one part of Ashwini Mantra, and that has been a um, ritual for me every day to recite it every morning. And uh, it was a tradition there that at the end of every session, we would recite uh, Madhu Ashwina and one uh, this one. So, with your permission, I'd gladly want to recite that. Definitely, definitely. I think we should also teach the other students yeah. because how important we know about Tanvantari, about uh, Ashwini Devatas, the importance of Ashwini Devatas, their contribution. Their, they were the first scientists. They had the scientific temperament. So when we understand the sutras, so that is when, when we really understand their sutras, the meaning of sutras of Ashwini Kumaras, we can know how scientific they were and why they were called as the Deva Bishak. So over to you, Ayuta. Yes, thank you. 
हरे ओ यथा सोम प्राथ स्तवने अश्विनोर्भवती प्रिय एवा मे अश्विनावर्च आत्मनिथ्रियता यथा मधु मधुकृत संभरती मधावधि एवा मे अश्विनावर्च आत्मनिधियता यथा मक्षा इदम मधु न्यंजती मधावधि एवा मे अश्विनावर्चस्तेजो बलमोजश्चिता अश्विना सारथेण मधुना तम शुभस्पती यथा वर्चस्वती वाच मदानी जना उनु हरे ओ हरे ओ गर्भम ऊंधे कृणी वाली गर्भम ऊंधे सरस्वती गर्भम ते अश्विनो देवा पुष्कर हरि ओ वंडरफुल आयुधा सो ग्लैड दैट यू बीन प्रैक्टिसिंग एवरी डे यस मैम थैंक यू थैंक यू दिस इज वंडरफुल थैंक यू thank you thank you for the presentation and uh, i think uh, we can conclude uh, today's uh, session uh, for the management and uh, sony has personally sent his wishes because he could not be here in attending to some religious events and because of the uh, interior parts of karnataka that is stuck in the no network so he has passed on his blessings to us uh, because there is support and uh, blessings uh, trying to achieve in this institute. So on behalf of Swami, uh, myself, Dr. Anita, the medical superintendent, all the students uh, are here and all the students uh, are in the morning. Uh, actually, the college starts at 10, but because of this, we have requested everyone to come at 8.30, 8.45. Uh, so thank all the students, and on behalf of everyone, I'd mm-hmm. like to extend my heartfelt gratitude and thanks to Dr. Sikiraji for uh, initiating this launch in our college and uh, providing a platform for our students uh, so that we can uh, think rationally and uh, for the development of Ayurveda. I would like to thank Jan Aron uh, for being the advisor of the Student Research Club uh, and I hope that in the coming days and months uh, uh, get the benefit of our great message that we are having. And of course, uh, Dr. Asmita Vele, uh, who joined us today and uh, who Assured us that she will be there for guiding us and uh, mentoring us. Uh, Ayuda, thank you very much for uh, agreeing to be the student research coordinator of this club. Uh, just a quick uh, message I would just like to read out. One uh, professor, uh, uh, Manik, I think Dr. Professor Manik, he has written two or three messages. Kamal Krishna Banik, uh, he has uh, just written very quickly a uh, very important message uh, I would like to read out is knowledge share is knowledge squared. And uh, Ayurveda says is a great science which will benefit to the society. So thank you, uh, Professor Dr. Kumal, uh, Kamal Krishnabanik. Uh, Yashashwini Bharadwaj has uh, wished us congratulations on the launch of Student Research Club. So thank you all for joining us today and for making the time. And I thank all the faculties, teaching faculties, non-teaching faculties, and especially all the students for this joining this event. And I hope that we all uh, contribute. It's a teamwork. You know, it's, this is just the launch. Unless we, you know, uh, work as a team, nothing will succeed. And we need to reach out. And uh, like Dr. Padivasha, we said, this is just a pilot. The whole intention behind this is, once we start working and once we develop a template of how things can be conducted, then this will be replicated in other colleges. And the students from our college can then serve as, you know, like uh, trainees or mentors or other students from other colleges. This is what the vision is, so that everybody starts speaking the same language. Uh, it's it's an endless. Uh, reach that we have stepped into. So again, on behalf of everyone, I thank each and every one of you. Thank you and have a great day ahead. And a good night to you, uh, Dr. Patibaji. Thank you very much for staying with us. Good night from here and good night. luck. Okay.
everybody. We'll be in thank touch. You. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vidya. Yeah. And Congratulations thank to you. everyone. To everyone. Yes. And Om Shri Ganesh Ayi. <laughs> All right. Nice. Have a great day. Bye.